Hey guys, welcome back. In this tutorial, we're looking at how to apply deformation to the body. It is going to be quite a bit of work, so let's get started right away. We have the arm over here. I'm starting from the left side of my structure. We have all of these nodes to go through to know if we want to add deformation to some of these or not. So we can just click on them one at a time. Um, we're starting with the hand here. The hand is going to be fine by itself. Um, there are some cases in which you would want to apply deformation to the hand, but that would only really happen when you separate the fingers from the palm and you want to give it a slight motion for each of these. Uh, right now this isn't the case, so we can actually leave that one alone. We'll go over to the forearm and in this one we probably want to have an envelope deformer around it because what's going to happen is depending on the view where you are the uh the base of the arm or the tip might get a little bit thicker a little bit thinner or maybe we want to just adjust that slight curve that we have at the moment inside of the arm i could have decided to pose him uh with the arm very straight um, but in this case, if we use the envelope around the arm, we'll be able to adjust it anyways. So the same will go for the arm. Of course, if I make this part a little bit wider, I'll have to do the same for the arm. So we can start with both of these and we can then move on to the rest. So depending on how you want to set your deformation, Right here, of course, you need to have your deformation toolbar. You can go inside the rigging tool and from here we can set our deformation. Right now, as you can see, part of the arm is masked behind the torso. So we can do one of two things. We can either bring up a display node and connect it underneath like such. From here, you'll need, of course, your display uh, your display drop down to be able to focus on this particular um, display. So anything that's connected to it will appear inside of that display. Or what we could do is simply select the node, press O in your timeline to center on the selection. And from here we have right next to the disable layer option, we have enable solo mode. So clicking on this one, it will mask all of the other nodes and basically just show you the one that you have selected. So we are inside the forearm and we want to apply our envelope. So let's make sure inside of our tool properties that we've selected envelope mode, this is a common mistake that people make. Uh, they'll start creating their, uh, their envelope using the automatic mode. You really need to be inside of the envelope in order to set that up as the envelope. So closing that up, um, we'll come back to it if we need to change it. So we can just go ahead and start creating the handles. Um, so I'm going to set one at the top of my limb here and one at the corner just about where the junction of my arm should be. So I don't want to have too many points inside of my structure. The more points you have, the more you have to move when it comes to the animation. So you have to kind of balance things out uh, in terms of determining how many points are necessary for the shape to be fully optimal. So for now, I'll just create one that has three at the bottom, three at the top and closing off. So it doesn't matter. As you can see, I still have some lines uh, that are not perfect. Usually I just go and edit them uh, at the end. So to close off my shape, pressing down Alt will change the cursor on my, uh, on my mouse here as you can see, and I'm going to click and drag to bring out that last handle. So from here, I can go and edit. Remember, red 
means that this is the resting position, this is the skeleton and the base position that you don't want to edit once you started animating. So we really need to make sure that it is going to be as good as it can be. So let's try to keep it as close as possible to the line. It doesn't need to be um, directly inside the middle. Basically, we just want it to work as well as possible. So let's adjust these a little bit. I try not to keep the handles too short because otherwise um, I have to really stretch these out and I grew into the habit of making those a little bit longer because otherwise if you had texture on that line it would stretch uh, that portion by quite a lot if you were to move that handle uh, very far off. So um, try to keep, to keep them about mid-length like this, not too short, not too long, but just nice enough to follow the trajectory of the line. So the offset can actually be moved since this is a uh, an envelope and not a curve. So once we've positioned these, we can actually go and try it out, see if it deforms properly, see if we can move around quite a bit of those so we can pretty much stretch that in a nice way. And same thing goes for the top here. You'll go, you'll grow more accustomed to it as uh, you start making more of these. Okay, so our deformation is over here. If I select my peg, I will still have the proper pivot information because the pivot information is stored inside of the peg and not inside of the drawing. So nice difference to have here. Uh, no need to attach drawings underneath these pegs in order to read the pivot information of the drawings since it's already stored in here. So to turn off solo mode, you would simply click on it again. And now we can see exactly where that deformation is. So moving over to our arm front, we can do the same thing as with the arm. We'll set the envelope around it after selecting solo mode. If you want to hide the previous deformation, you can simply click on show the selected deformation chain and hide all others. Right now, I wanna show this one. There's no deformation applied. Therefore, it will hide the previous deformation. So going the same with this one, I'll just go ahead and redo this one quick. I'm going to edit it a little bit again to make those handles a little bit longer. Oops. If ever you make a mistake and click elsewhere, you can just hit Control Z to remove them. For removing points inside of the structure directly here, if you realize that you've uh, made one too many, usually I will just redo the shape instead of trying to edit those points and trying to remove some of them from my deformation chain. Um, because it is just a single deformation chain for now, it doesn't matter too much if you have to redo it. It didn't take that long um, to do to begin with. Um, but if you wanted to, let's say, remove this point, you could as well go and delete that to reposition it. This is also an option that you can do inside of the envelope deformer. So looks like we have our arm and our forearm. So now for the uh, the entire arm front, I have these two little pieces of hair right here. Um, these probably don't need to have deformation applied to them. They're pretty small and they uh, they move pretty well on their own as it is. Um, so we'll just leave those aside for now uh, and concentrate on the sleeve, which we have here. Um, so the sleeve will be invert cut inside the shape of the arm. So um, it's still probably a good idea 
to have an envelope around this as well. So we can test out a few things for this one. Um, it would probably be a good idea to see the entire arm just to kind of see how it falls uh, on the entire piece of the arm here. So instead of using the solo mode, I'm going to use a display this time around. So control Y to create a display, or you could just as well go and get one from the node library. So I'm just going to hook that up underneath the composite of my full arm. So we kind of see here how having several composites uh, can be pretty useful for isolating certain elements. I'm going to go and get my display three. And now I can see the full arm. So we can run a few tests here. Um, the only portion of the sleeve that will be visible will be inside of the arm right here. So all of these corners won't be visible. We don't want to ever see that inside of the arm itself. So um, pretty much at this point, we have two possibilities depending on if we want these lines to be independently animatable. We could have a deformer that covers both of these, or we could just do a regular envelope as well. So let's try it out. If we start from Let's say the top, I have my node selected. I'm going to just do a really simple shape. And close that up. So if I want to break those handles here and not have them associate um, and be, be uh, parallel to one another, I can press down Alt and break that handle same as I would with the contour editor. And I can do the same thing over on this side as well, keeping most of it um, ideally inside and just adjusting it like that. So we can try it out here, see how it looks. And we can see that the line kind of breaks easily, probably too close to where my arm is at the moment. Um, so instead of doing that, maybe I'll just edit those points and move them a little bit closer, perhaps at the center. So the idea is not for the envelope deformer to uh, necessarily follow a line at all times. We just want it to look good. So over here in this one, I already have my line that's quite better than it was. Perhaps I could edit it a little bit more and even bring it super close to this line and that's even better. So the portion that will be visible inside of the line, remember we're not going to see this ever. So we can actually have the sleeve be a little bit more curvy, a little bit more on the inside and really come and adjust that whole portion. So to me, this makes the most sense to, uh, to be able to animate the sleeve um, now, if I wanted to be able to uh, animate the other line as well and bring it closer, I would need to have a deformation that's a little bit more complex. Let's just try it out so we can see both methods. I'll disconnect this group and save it for later because I still think I'm going to go uh, with this one. But just for the sake of trying it out, let's start over from this side. So try to start with the root of your deformation uh, over in one of the points that is going to connect to this one here. So I'll create my first line, keep going. I'll create another one over here that will connect to this line. And I'll create another one at the tip it's going to create a little loop as you can see here, but we'll edit the length of this other handle. And the second one and closing it off again. So the only thing different that I did for now is adding another point here and starting with the root at that point. So I can edit those handles, make them a little bit shorter, make some of them longer. And now we have the full envelope. 
The only thing missing now is the line going from this position into the next one here. So I can actually click on this one and if I wanted to have a point in the center, I could start my connection from here. So you see that there's actually three handles now coming out of this point and I can close it off just the same by pressing Alt and clicking again to connect it back to this one. So now using this one, I have a few more points than I did before. So I can actually move this line around. I can move this one as well. So maybe I wanna get rid of this one. That can be done as well. And looking into my deformation group, let's have a look at what it's going to look like. So some of these nodes are actually piling up. We can move them a little bit more to the side. Now curve one, is this one here. So it's starting from that particular point, we are starting a second curve. So we see where exactly the split occurs. So from here, I can decide to, as I said, remove this one. I would have to, of course, edit these points a little bit to make sure that everything kind of matches. And from here, that's an alternative way where I can position these different lines on the arm, uh, giving me a little bit more flexibility. Depending on the case, of course, you don't want to over complexify uh, the rig that you have. So you could go with one or the other uh, method. Okay, so looks like that's it for the arm. We have the entire thing here with the deformation. I can delete that display. If we want to see all three at the same time, we can just highlight these, press the button over here to show selected deformation. And now we see that we can animate all of these little things to kind of stretch and squash. Same thing with the sleeve. Um, so you guys can go ahead and do the same thing on the other arm. Uh, the legs is going to be pretty much the same principle as well. So as you can see, we have uh, the same shape. So you can apply this principle to all the limbs, uh, the, the arms, the legs as well. We'll come back in a little bit for the feet, the torso and uh, the neck. Then we can move on to the head. I'll see you guys in the next video.